So I have spoken to people that have been in the porn industry before, and one thing that they pointed to me, which I just think that if people know this, I don't see how any person in good conscience could consume porn, is how high the suicide rates are for women in the industry. Yeah. And how drugged a lot of these women are to give themselves the confidence to be able to do what they are doing. Yeah. And how drugged they are after they do these scenes mm -hmm. to be able to try to numb the pain of realizing what they have just done or what they have contributed to. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, so in 2018, there was like back to back to back suicides. I mean, it was every month. I think there it was like five or six months in a row, somebody was dying. I have probably 15 friends that have died to either suicide or drug overdose. I just lost somebody that I was very close to last year. Um, it's a very, there's a very high death rate. So just to pause here, I don't think people who watch and uh, are consumers of the adult industry know what they are actually doing to human beings. I've often thought about uh, subscribing to Netflix or DSTV. The only problem is you pay a subscription. So every part of every movie, even the adult movies, to do 18 sex scenes, filthy language, blaspheming Jesus' name, you are actually contributing to paying for those young people to do that. So your name, your blood money is paying for them. That's a problem with a subscription service opposed to if you pay for, if you pay for a movie, you vote for the good movies with your money, but not with a subscription service. That blood money you have given is paying for age-restricted movies even though you do not watch it. So many people don't know this. Probably, probably most of the adult age-restricted filth on DSTV, Netflix, whatever, is paid for by Christians because they just think, well, they're not watching it, but what they're re not realizing is they're paying for this to be made. I mean, thinking about many industries that also lead people into sexual immorality, you could start off with the modeling industry. I mean, it's known that it really promotes more and more promiscuous thinking, uh, immoral thinking, skimpy and skimpier clothing. So the whole model industry where people are voted on and rated by their looks can create huge problems because it's how you look and how you appear that determines your self-worth. Um, and your self-value uh, and obviously in the modeling industry many many people go on from there to the adult industry um, and as far as drugs I mean I was one of those drug addicts I had left the industry at one point at my three and a half year mark because I was withdrawing from heroin oh. um, and that's when I ended up meeting a pimp and he got me back into the industry for another three so talk about when you became a drug addict. So you're in the industry for three years. You yeah. left because of your addiction. Mm -hmm. When was the first time that you did heroin and, and what gave you that impulse? Okay, so, well, heroin, I mean, there were other drugs that led up to that. So uh, I was on set. I was new in the entertainment or in the adult industry. And I had, I was, I'm 105 pounds, five foot one inch. I mean, I'm not overweight, but a director tells me, you're fat, you need to lose weight. And in high school, although I'd never like been a pot smoker, I did try Coke a few times. And so I knew that it would make me not eat. So I asked one of the models like, hey, I mean, apparently I'm fat and I need to lose weight. Like, is there, you know, do you have access to like any cocaine? And she was like, you know, very suspicious as to why I was asking her. I'm like, no, I, I really do just want to buy cocaine. And so she ended up getting me some. Um, and then from there, I just kind of got hooked and I started using it every day. Uh, and then I started dating a guy that introduced me to the Norcos, um, which are like Vicodin there uh, for pain, pain medication. From there, it went to Oxycontins. And then from Oxycontin, there was a girl that I was buying Oxycontins from that said, have you ever chased the dragon? And I'm like, what does that mean? And he's like, come over and I'll show you. So I hung out with her and she pulled out this piece of foil put a piece of black tar. She just started smoking heroin in front of me and she's like, it's better than Oxy. So I tried it um, and used that for many months before I decided that, you know what, like I can't take this anymore. I had called my grandma and told her, hey, if you don't come get me, I honestly think I'm gonna commit suicide because I can't take this life anymore. 
Wow. Wow. So you became a heroin abuser. Started with Oxycontin, cocaine, mm -hmm. and then it leads to something needing something stronger and yeah. stronger and stronger. Now, were you taking these drugs before scenes, after scenes, between you know, between scenes? I I lived on drugs because mm -hmm. uh, what happens when you become addicted is your body goes through intense withdrawals. Mm -hmm. So if you don't feed it what it needs, you you're going to lose control of your bowels, your legs. Everything's going to hurt. You're going to be in intense pain. Like far worse than the flu, like you just feel awful. So I, I mean, I was on them every day when I was down to like my last 10 to 15 pills. I'm like, I need to call the dealer because if they don't have them, I need to figure it out. Like, I mean, it was a vicious cycle of like, I'd get paid from porn, but then I'd have to go and chase the drug dealer. Like I, my net worth said, was said to be like, I don't know, $3.4 million by the time I left the business. I left that industry with my last paycheck, $1,500. That was you're it. making money and then you're spending the money to get drugs. Yeah. Imagine being able to make that much amount of money. She said her net worth was about $3.4 million. That is approximately 70 million rand. Apart from sexual immorality, drug misuse, um, murders, uh, abortions can also be attributed to the whole adult industry, not just in the people acting it out, obviously what happens when they get uh, pregnant, they probably just many of them get a, get an abortion, but also encouraging other people. What happens what your, when your child sees uh, on DSTV and Netflix or Showmax that you are subscribing to immoral movies, age-restricted movies, that makes their mind more promiscuous and maybe one day start doing things with girlfriends and boyfriends that could lead to a child and abortion. I met a guy that I started dating. He was in a motorcycle gang. Uh, I had moved in with him. He got stabbed to death in front of me. And then from there, uh, I had nowhere to live. And the pimp, which was his friend, comes and kind of is like, oh, well, I'll put you in a hotel for a few days. And he's giving me meth. And, you know, because at this point I started using crystal meth. Um, so and did you get clean while you were with your grandmother? I did. Sort of. Yeah, but it was a very short stint of mm -hmm. being clean. Like, it, it didn't last long, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you fell right back in. Mm -hmm. You watch your ex-boyfriend get stabbed to death. Mm -hmm. His friend, he's the pimp, says, hey, I'll, I'll take care of you. You need some more place to stay. And now he's supplying you with drugs, yep. methamphetamine. Yes. Totally different drug from heroin. Totally different, yeah. This one gets you wired. So... Uh, I start hearing voices, so he ends up taking me to a mental institution. I get clean there for a few days, and then he brings me to his apartment. Um, he was actually a believer, a backslidden believer, so he introduces me to the Bible and takes me and gets me baptized. Um, this is the same person that gave you the pimp. meth, mm -hmm. and he is a pimp, Yes, but he's also a believer. And after you go into a mental institution, he says, actually, by the way, I forgot to mention that aside, yeah. aside from being a pimp mm -hmm. and aside from supplying you with drugs, I also am a believer. Yeah, because he was a meth addict at one point and found God, and that's how God healed him. But then he ended up going into this line of work, if you want to call it that. I'm not sure how God yeah. healed him, but he's also well, supplying yeah, you're right. <laughs> methamphetamine. He sounds like a conflicted yeah. Christian. Very much so. Which Very is, much so. You know, it's, that's not to make fun of him. It's just yeah. to point to the fact that— No, it's that, true. You know, yep. he clearly was still it's true. struggling himself. But so after still, I get he clean, tells you about Christ. Yeah. yeah so, uh, yeah. So after I get um, clean and I kind of have like just a new, almost like a new attitude because I'm reading the Bible every day, but I don't really understand it. He starts to explain to me that, um, you know, Jesus loves prostitutes because of Mary Magdalene and very twisting, twisting the scriptures. And then from there, He's like, you know, I just think it's time. I think that it's time for you to get back into the porn industry. And, you know, and I'm just like, like I knew that he was a pimp, but he, because men were my weakness and I was, I had grown attracted to him at that point. And I thought like, oh no, like he even gave me a ring, proposed to me, all of this. So I'm thinking like, I thought we were in love. Like I was very naive. Like, why would you put me back into, you know, I don't know. I let him take advantage of me. I didn't know. I was vulnerable at that time in my life. And how old are you at this time? Uh, 21. So young. Yeah. So young. Yep. All of this has happened. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of life up until this point. Absolutely. And now you think you're in love and yeah. he says, you know, Jesus loved prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time for you to go back to the porn industry. Exactly. And you... I go back. You went back. I, back. I told him, I said, you know, me thinking that we're in love. Like, hey, if, uh, if I go back to the industry, we're not going to last. And he's like, oh, yeah, we're going to be together forever. 
So three years later, <laughs> you know, I had an encounter. I, I actually had an encounter with God and I just felt like, you know what, I need to leave this guy. And so he'd been taking all my money for three years, but I prepared myself. I stashed money um, from an overnight escorting gig that I did in, I think it was in Miami. And uh, he found out about the money that I stashed, took it. I was crazy, called 911, threatened to turn him in. And he gave me the money and I ended up getting away from him. And that time it was actually with the help of my mom. Really? Mm -hmm. So did you, did you call her in I did. A, a desperate moment? In a desperate moment, yeah. So I have spoken to people that have been in the porn industry before, and one thing that they pointed to me, which I just think that if people know this, I don't see how any person in good conscience could consume porn, is how high the suicide rates are for women in the industry. Yeah. And how drugged a lot of these women are to give themselves the confidence to be able to do what they are doing. Yeah. And how drugged they are after they do these scenes mm -hmm. to be able to try to numb the pain of realizing what they have just done or what they have contributed to. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, so in 2018, there was like back to back to back suicides. I mean, it was every month. I think there it was like five or six months in a row, somebody was dying. I have probably 15 friends that have died to either suicide or drug overdose. I just lost somebody that I was very close to last year. Um, it's a very, there's a very high death rate. So Randolph, look at this uh, search result here. Best sex movies on Netflix for a steamy and erotic watch. Now, the shocking thing is, well, what I searched is, I think I searched adult movies on Netflix because one of the greatest problems is Many so-called Christians say, well, they're not in watching and paying for the porn industry, but they're watching and paying for the adult industry. Many of these movies on Netflix and DSTV that are subscription service, you are paying a small fraction of your fee is going to making these movies, writing the scripts, instructing the girls and guys in their 20s and 30s to act out these deeds, to swear the words they swear, to blaspheme as they blaspheme, specifically because you are paying a subscription service and not um, uh, not paying for specific movies, thereby voting in a good way with your money. So this is extremely important. Even if you watch it or not, does not mean a thing to those poor people that have to be acting out these movies and saying and swearing and doing what they have to do in these movies. So what are Christians, so-called Christians, going to say to God? That um, when it looks like of the greatest supporters and financiers of the adult industry in the subscription-based so-called soft porn, DSTV, Netflix um, realm are so-called Christians, what are they going to say to God? 